The other day I was driving the old money pit Miata when I noticed a crack on the dash of this otherwise mint condition car. No! That cannot stand. I won't have it. So today we gotta fix it. Listen, it happens, especially on cool old cars from the 90s. The sun cooks the living hell out of your dashboard to the point that it becomes super crusty and it cracks. It happens. But what can you do about it? Apart from spending way too much money on a unicorn uncracked dash on eBay, is there a way to fix a cracked dash that doesn't look like trash? We're gonna take a crack at it today and test out three different methods for fixing cracked dashboards. And I really hope it's gonna work because it's been a lot of work so far. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's get cracking. But before we get back to Zach, we wanted to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, eBay Motors. As you guys know, we did a groundbreaking, historic, never done before competition with eBay Motors where Nolan and I got to judge the best and worst cars that you guys have listed on the eBay Motors app. It's uh, pretty crazy how much variety there was. Everything from a 2019 Lamborghini Huracan to like 150 really crappy spray painted pieces of trash <laughs> it's true like 3,000 of you guys submitted we looked at all the cars and uh we finally have our winners and our losers in our, our worst place finisher winning a 500 dollars ebay motors gift card is the 1994 mitsubishi eclipse congratulations you have the worst car on ebay motors this is by far the worst car but we're giving this person over three times what they sold the car for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it pays to be the worst. Now, in second place, also winning $500 for eBay Motors, is 1987 Buick Regal Turbo. Oh yeah, this thing's cool. The color I really like, the paint is great, but just the shape of the car is so 80s. I want it so bad. In first place, winning a $1,000 eBay Motors gift card is the 1953 Studebaker Commando Starliner. Yeah! The, the Studebaker is just super cool. I can't argue with it, man. I, you know, like I, like I said, I thought the Buick was gonna take it all away. And then going through, I just really fell in love with the Studebaker and it edged out the win. So thank you to all the fans for listing your cars on eBay Motors and making this competition such a success. And now back to the Job. So how do I fix a cracked dash? Well, I was wondering the same thing, so I hopped on the old internet uh, to figure that out. And my research basically returned four options. However, the first option is ridiculously expensive. It's buying an uncracked dash. And in the case of the S14, that's like seven or $800 on eBay. So in reality, there are only three options that we're gonna be looking at today. The first option is what's called an overlay. You get the picture. It literally just lays over your cracked dash and just hides your cracks. This actually looks better than I expected. It only costs about $150. The big question is how well it'll fit on the stock dash. It's gonna be super easy to install. All they want you to do is put some silicone on the back and glue it to your cracked dash, which means that your dash doesn't have to come out. Okay, so option two and three are predicated on kind of the same thing. We're gonna actually have to fix our cracks. This is gonna be like using Bondo uh, to fix a dent on a door. So we'll go over this. It's not gonna be hard, but the real question is once we have the cracks fixed, how do we make the dash look good again? How do we finish it in a way that makes it look acceptable? Well, that's where option two comes in. So we've got our cracks fixed and we're ready to flock it. So flock it, you may have heard of it, Barry race car, it's super cool. Basically, the idea is once you fix your cracks, you cover your whole dash in this adhesive, okay? Nice and thick coat. And then you take this shaker mabob thingy and you fill it up with these rayon fibers. This is like powder fiber. And you shake this fiber onto your wet adhesive until it's fully saturated. And then you end up with basically like a seamless suede texture. And if it's done right, it can turn out pretty good. I've never done it, but I'm pretty confident we can do a good job. So this should be pretty cool. And it costs about $70 for everything you see here, which isn't too bad but I think we can go even cheaper. That's where option three comes in. Now, option number three is arguably the hardest, but the cheapest. I spent about $35 on these three cans of spray paint, and we're gonna try to fix our dash to look like new. 
Now it's tough because the dash has a texture to it and it, it, you can see it. So we're gonna have a little bit of a struggle on our hands, but I think we can do it. All right, now that we've laid out our options, it's time to do the part of this that I've been dreading the most, which is removing two dashes from two cars. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's go take a look at this 14. So the S14 dash has some cracks and they don't look very good. I don't like it. So uh, the idea with the overlay is that they just lay on top of your crack dash and they just hide all your cracks. Not a bad option. Felipe, hey, on the up and up. Not too bad. Uh, I mean, it fits pretty nice and snug. It's like tight over this area. The, the worst parts are just kind of the cutout for the airbag. It just looks obvious that you've got an overlay. But I mean, overall for 150 bucks and also for taking about two seconds to install, that's not bad. I mean, it blends in pretty quick. You don't really notice. It follows these seams pretty well. The texture is different, but it doesn't look awful. This isn't a terrible option, but it honestly, it's not what I want. It's not quite good enough for me. So I think we're gonna have to uh, say see you later to the old overlay. And the S14 is actually gonna get option number two. We're gonna take this dash out, fix the cracks, and flock it. Now, the Miata's dash really isn't in that bad a shape. We've only got this crack here to fix, and we've got a hole over here, so not too bad. This is a pretty good starting point, which is why we're gonna use option three on this. So option number three is the cheapest option, but it's also the option I'm most concerned about because I think we could actually end up making this dash look worse than it looks right now. But the goal is to make it look brand new. Brand new, like it just came off the factory floor. Who knows how things will go? There's only one way to find out, and it starts with getting these dashes out of the cars. Ugh, I don't wanna, but I'm gonna. All right, listen, goals for today. We're gonna have both dashes out of the car, definitely. And I would really like to at least have the first coat of filler on the cracks. Ideally, I mean, if we're speaking really ideally, Cracks on both dashes are fixed today, and tomorrow all we have to do is paint and flock. You flock with me? Put it on your head, you look like them, them guys <laughs> from Star Wars. From uh, uh, Spaceballs, dude. There you go. Ow, oh, it's way too tight. <laughs> Dude, see how strong I am? All right, cool. Let's put this thing in the backyard. Oh! All right, that's one dash. One down, one to go. That wasn't so bad. No, not so bad. I mean, honestly, it's very similar to taking out a Miata grill. It's a 90s Japanese car. Miata dashboard. This is not the grill? All right, first we gotta talk about our method for fixing cracks. Now, uh, I've never fixed a dash crack, but I think I've got a good method sorted out. First thing we're gonna do is take our Dremel with this little bit here, and we're gonna Dremel out our cracks. We're gonna make a nice little valley for our filler to fill in uh, for when we go to fill them, and we'll just make sure we uh, kind of break the end of any of these cracks. So we kind of like, we'll bring it to a big circle at the end and that'll keep it from cracking any further after we fix it. And then we'll use some sandpaper and scuff up the surrounding area. Okay, so I think we've got the cracks to the point that we're ready to put some filler in them. So the first step for the filler is actually to prep it uh, because this is kind of a tough surface for anything to stick to, this old crappy foam. Uh, so we've got to prep it and then we can apply our filler. We're just gonna, Lay this on pretty thick, I think. Give it 10 minutes and then we're ready for filler. Just gonna kinda put it where I'm gonna put the filler, you know? All right, we're ready to put some filler into these cracks. So, filler, I mean, this is like, kinda like what Bondo is basically. It's a filler with a hardener. Don't forget the hardener or else you're just gonna make a mess that you're not gonna wanna clean up. Oh, that's the smell. It smells just like Bondo. All right, we got a chopstick. We're just gonna stir this up. You know, it's a little bit separated, give it a nice stir. All right, now we've got our hardener. It's a cream hardener, and it doesn't take much. Well, I'm gonna shake it up first. You don't want that separated ketchup goop coming out. That much, that should do it. Now, it's important to mix this really well. So we got our spreader, and we're just gonna, just gonna mush it around a bit, you know? Looks like a nice solid color. 
Now we're ready to lay it in. See what we can do. I'm gonna try to fill these cracks pretty well. Now this is probably gonna take a few coats on most of these cracks, maybe more on a few of them, but that's okay. That's how this stuff goes. Uh, you're just not gonna get it all in one go. But we've made good progress. Like that crack is pretty well full. So we'll leave that alone. We can sand that down and then finish it off nicely with another coat. Let's keep moving. All right, so we got a coat of filler on the S14 dash. Cracks are starting to fill in. It's starting to look like we might know what we're doing. So I think I'm gonna get a coat of filler under the Miata dash, and that's probably as far as we'll make it tonight. All right, it's the next morning. Uh, the dashboards have been drying overnight and they're ready to be sanded. That's what today's gonna look like. A lot of sanding, some more filler laying down, more sanding, so on and so forth, until these things look good. And then we'll get them painted and flocked. That's the goal for today. I think we can do it. All right, I think the S14 dash is ready to be flocked. So we just gotta kinda clean up our area a little bit. And then I need to wipe down the whole dash, get it nice and clean, I'll use some acetone. And then it's time to start the flocking process. This is option two, and this is probably the one I feel the most confident about. I think this is gonna turn out pretty good. All right, the flocking gun is loaded, about ready to pour out the adhesive. This is our $75 option, and this is the one I think I'm most uh, confident in. I think this is gonna look cool. So, without further ado, let's pour some glue. Oh, he's moving quick. You ain't never seen moves like this. Oh, it looks great. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, this is a workout. I should have bought the air gun. So they also offer an air gun for doing this same job, but it's an extra 60 bucks and I was trying to be cheap. So I just got this cardboard tube that's really giving me the old shoulder workout, especially after 17 straight hours of sanding. I think that's all the flock and fibers we can get to stick to this dash. Uh, I think that's that's it, that's a flock dash. Now, there's too much flocking on here right now. You can see it kind of piled up. So, from here, I'm basically just gonna let this dry overnight, then I can shake off all the excess and that's it. Then she's ready to go back in the car. I honestly, I think it looks pretty good. And once it's back in the car with everything put back together, wow, can't wait. I hope the Miata dash turns out nearly this good. On to that. Talk, talk, talk. Apparently my esteemed co-workers just threw the dashboard to the Miata on the ground. It fell over. Fell over. Uh, I don't think they want to finish tonight is what they're telling me. So they decided to break the Miata dash worse than it was when it started. Christ. Oh. So now I've got more to fix. So back to square one. Where's that damn filler? You hear that crunch? Dude. Not psyched. Wait, Felipe, reenact, reenact how it happened. Did you thunder the earth? No, I was walking and I was gonna set my camera down on it as such. And then everything just fell over. And then Eddie looks at me and I was like, dude, it wasn't me. And that was that. Sounds that's like a like, middle like, school ass excuse. Yeah, that's a, most of how it happened. Uh, you know, this was our in pretty good shape dash. You know, the best chance we had to make a dash look like brand new. <sighs> Fading quickly. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's gonna be okay, but I do have to fix these cracks and it's gonna take a few coats, so that means I'm probably not getting this dash painted tonight, which you can solely put on the shoulders of Felipe Armenta and Eddie Esparza. All right, so we're back in action on Monday morning and we're about ready to paint the Miata's dashboard. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this thing cleaned down. I'm gonna wipe it with acetone and then we'll be ready to paint it. Then we're gonna try to match the texture and I have no idea if it's gonna work. There's a good chance it's not gonna work, if I'm being honest with myself. Uh, adhesion promoter is really important stuff, especially for painting plastic parts. This will help keep the paint from lifting, which happens pretty often. If you've ever painted plastic stuff, you've probably experienced that. So get a can of this. I'm just gonna dust it on, do a couple coats like this. All right, so the adhesion promoter is laid down, it's dried, and we're ready to start laying down some primer. 
Now I've got this high build primer surfacer. It's good for flexible uh, surfaces, which is what we got going on here. But the high build part is pretty important too. This is what I'm gonna use to hopefully duplicate the texture of the dashboard. So I'm gonna hit everything with primer, but I'm gonna build it up especially high in the areas that we've fixed cracks and we need to duplicate texture. And then once it's all built up and it's like 95%, 98% dry, I'm gonna take this piece of vinyl and this roller and try to imprint this vinyl's pattern, this texture into our high build primer surfacer. So this might work or it might just absolutely ruin everything I've done and I'm gonna to have to start over from scratch and start sanding again and make my life way worse. I honestly don't know, but we're gonna give it a shot. Wish me luck. All right, now when you're painting pretty much anything, light coats is the key. You're gonna get a better end result if you do a bunch of light coats than one heavy coat. That's when you're talking about primer or the final color. Light coats, take your time, be patient. So now we just gotta figure out when this is mostly dry and then hit it with one of these. It's gonna be a little bit of a guessing game and by golly, I might get it wrong. Well, the worst that could happen is I could do this too soon while the paint is still wet, and then I'm just gonna pick the paint right up off the dash. It's gonna look like trash, and then it's gonna need sanded, which means it's gonna need cleaned again, which means we're basically starting over from scratch. Uh, so, you know, I'm just doing it. All right, so we're gonna see. We're gonna try to keep this in one spot. Give it a little roller action. Oh boy. Yeah, buddy. So we went a little too early there. Hi yeah yeah, that's okay. We'll let that dry, then we can just sand this spot and we should be back up and running in like 15 minutes. God dang it. But hey, look at all that texture we added. I think we gotta split the difference. We did it, we tried it too dry and we tried it too wet. Just gotta get it right in between the two. This roller could roll a little better. It's your only job. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. I mean it's textured, it's not perfect but it's not bad. I think that's gonna be good enough. We'll go ahead and paint that. For that, I've got this. This is SEM, I think I've got their primer too pretty good as far as spray can stuff goes. I've got the Landau Black. It should be pretty close to how the dash looked uh, at the start of this. Maybe a little bit more flat black, a little less reflective, which I'm into. So I've got three cans of this. It's a nice flexible coating. I think it should be perfect for the job and hopefully it'll look good. It's all about them coats, baby. Light coats, light coats, light coats, light coats. The Miata's dash is finally done and it's all back together and ready to go in the car. So I'm gonna put it in the car and then we'll get a good look at it. I mean, it looks pretty good laying on the floor here, but it's not quite the same as seeing it installed. So I'm gonna install it and then we can really stack these two dashes up against each other and figure out which of these methods was the better one. All right, we got the dash back in the Miata and we can take a good look at it now. And it looks pretty good. And this was the cheapest option. This cost about $35 in supplies. This definitely took the most elbow grease, but if we're being honest and critical, does it look good? Yeah. Does it look perfect? Nah. No, you can tell where we fixed it. You know, as hard as we tried to retexture the, uh, the, the area that we fixed, it's just really hard to do and it didn't really work that well. You can clearly see where we fixed this dash if you're looking for it. Overall, it looks good at a glance, but it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look brand new and that was the goal. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to call this a failure. Now let's go look at the S14. All right, so here in the S14 with the dash that we flocked, and this was our second cheapest option at about $75 in supplies, and I think it looks really good. I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't match up well with the stock plastics, but I think it looks great. And the good news was, while it was a little bit more expensive, only about $40 more in supplies, it was way easier to do. And I gotta say that this is the winner for today's uh, little experiment. This, I think, combines ease of use with cost effectiveness and a good looking end result. I think this looks awesome and I couldn't be happier. I also thought that this was an appropriate time to throw this S15 steering wheel in the car and I think that looks cool too. So it's a banner day in the S14 and I couldn't be happier. 
Uh, let me know what you guys think, which dash you think looks better. And if you're in the Southern California area and you have an S14 and your dash is cracked, hit me up on Instagram at Zach Job and you can have that overlay that we looked at earlier. And don't forget to follow Donut Media while you're there. See you guys next week. Oh yeah, okay. So I thought that with the dash out, I would find somewhere to stuff this ECU, but there's like nowhere to put it. So don't judge me. It's gonna go in the glove box now. I just didn't have time to make that happen for this episode. So this, this is the next thing to be done here. Just don't mind this. Don't mind the construction.